Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another episode. I am a little tired so you're gonna have to forgive me. Uh, if you want more details you can look up uh, via, uh, my Facebook page. Uh, Veos Human Community Facebook page. But uh, yeah, it's a long story. I'm not gonna get into it. But anyway, before you now is uh, the original um, attempt to make a, a new Jupiter star. And of course I called it the X-Craft Delta. And uh, it, it it was okay. It worked out pretty nicely, but it was right on the borderline of if you add anything else to the craft, it wouldn't make it into orbit. It would run out of fuel. So I had to figure out something else. I had to figure out how to get more power and, uh, well, genu genuinely make it a little sleeker in design. All right, so here we are with the Mark 20, the uh, finished version. It's got all the lights and everything, all the... Um, all the action groups are in there. Now, normally, normally what I used to do, what it was, I went ahead and I put everything inside the description underneath the craft name. However, in version point one point one point two, they thought it was a great idea to go ahead and limit the amount of data that you could put in here, which is bizarre, um, kind of a, uh, a bite in the ass. But you know, it's it's one of those things that you gotta have to unfortunately um, adapt and move on so right now uh, I just put down the classification you know um, what kind of what kind of type it is what you know who built it and all sort of good stuff and um, what what um, heavy cargo transport this that and the other thing and basically it reminds you just watch the video if you want to know more so basically what we're going to do now is we're going to go over the action groups real quick uh, right now I have the number one for the switch toggle on the um, or toggle the mode on the uh, rapier engines and of course to shut down the engines all together and then number three opens up the main cargo bay the top door this one is the ramp and of course this one is the uh, shield docking mechanism there's two docking uh, docking ports there's one in front and then there's one inside uh, number 10 number 10 I put the air brakes on and the the reason why I did that separately is because uh, when you have the brakes on when you're on the uh, runway uh, these look better when they're down instead of up you don't have to do this if you don't want to but this is more of a uh, something that makes it look nicer anyway so all right now let's go ahead and that's pretty much it actually oh oh also and I do apologize but um, unfortunately if I had all the time in the world I would have figured this out already uh, but during re-entry uh, for this version of uh, Jupiter Star when all the fuel tanks are empty and everything is empty the center of mass is a little bit behind the center of lift now as long as you keep your nose steady and whatever fuel you have left over you put right in the front front fuel tank you should be good as long as you don't make anything as long as you don't turn sharp or try to pull up too sharp anything to not flip the whole thing over because thankfully even though the center of lift is in front of the center of mass um, because of the way that the wings are it, it's really hard to flip it over unless you give it a good upward pull or sideward sideways pull it's not going to just automatically flip around on you uh, if you're pointed straight. If you're pointed straight, it's going to act like an arrowhead. And it's going to dig into the atmosphere. And it's going to keep you straight. Um, right now, I'm working on some ideas uh, to make a new Mark, uh, new Jupiter star that keeps everything in front, you know, all the all the weight up in front, no matter how empty it gets. But right now, it, I'm running into, of course, you know, technical problems. Anyway. So let's go ahead and, um, now that we've got that out of the way, let's go ahead and give you a quick flight tutorial. Alright, there we go. It's a little bit bouncy. I could replace them with another rapier engine, but I figured why add the extra weight and plus these uh, are better on fuel than these are. Plus they get me up there. They get up there to 25, you know, some odd thousand meters, which is plenty. It's plenty. All right, so SAS with the T key, Z key for full power and spacebar. Hopefully this is not too loud. Now you're gonna have to you're gonna have to steer a little bit, just like in real life. They gotta try to keep it on the runway when they're taking off. 
but thankfully it's 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 um it's pretty good I'm just tapping on the A key right now just keep it right in the middle somewhere all right now I'm gonna pull up All right, we're on our way into orbit. Um, yeah, leave the SAS on, sit back and relax. Well, I'll tell you when. <laughs> Now right here, I'm not going to um, toggle the mode. You can if you want to, but my theory is is that if I can get high enough um, with only using liquid fuel for the rapier engines as long as possible, then I'll actually save fuel because of the fact that I'll get up real high. Now I realize I'm losing delta V as we speak, but when it kicks into rocket mode, you'll see how fast I gain that extra 30 or 40 delta V. I forget how much it was. Yeah, I've already gained it back. I've tried the other way around where I've initiated the rockets. Um, I've initiated the rockets as soon as I started losing Delta V and I actually had less fuel afterwards. So something about just letting it ride all the way up to almost 30,000 meters before letting it kick in, even if you lose about 40 or 50 Delta V. Something about it saves fuel. All right, now I like to wait to about 37,000 meters. And once it gets to about 37,000 meters, that's when I'll click my pro grade. All right, clicking pro grade icon. Now what I, what I believe this does and it's and it's worked it's worked beautifully for me. I've tried going at 40,000, 45,000 before going into pro grade. I've tried even doing it earlier, about 35,000. But around 37,000 is somewhat the sweet spot for some reason. If you do that, you get into orbital speeds sooner rather than later. And what this does is allows the fuel that you're burning to be used to get into actual orbit rather than just getting up out of the atmosphere, if that makes any sense whatsoever. I need to keep my eye on uh, the apoapsis height. Put your finger on the X key and uh, that, 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 that's good. That's good. All right, so about 10 seconds out, we're gonna go ahead and go full burn, or you know, keep your eye on the time the app lapses. If it starts to increase, here we go. Slow back down, slow down. Okay, speed up, slow, no, bad camera, bad. I'm using the control and shift keys. Shift to increase my throttle and control to lower it. And I'm keeping my eye on the time the app lapses, trying to keep it around 10 seconds. Just a little bit. A little bit more and there we are that's fine that's perfect and we still have over a thousand oxidizer and over a thousand liquid fuel which is perfect and of course this is not this is not of course um, counting the cargo because I hit stage view normally I would go ahead and, and uh, find a space station and dock to it and everything else but I already did that for the uh, presentation of the craft. So we're not going to be doing that because I do not have time for it, unfortunately. So I want to go down, hit the I key. There we go. Hit the three key close. All right. I uh, have not been able to play around with um, with figuring out what the what the what the drop <laughs> what the drop height is for this thing or the drop periapsis is for this thing, uh, but I do remember in my testing 
that I put 45 degrees above above the Kerbal Space Center and I ended up landing somewhere in the desert. So what that tells me is that I got to put 45 degrees periapsis somewhere around here and uh, I might land somewhere around here. I hope. Yes, right there. Okay. Now I'm going to burn to about 45 for the periapsis. 70, 60, 50, 45. Well, uh, that'll work. So I'm going to hold down Alt and we're going to click all of these. Every single one. We're going to throw them right into the front. Actually, um, gosh darn it. We need to put this thing all the way up. As soon as you get to the atmosphere, we need to put it all the way up. All right, you notice I'm doing a little bit of an experiment right here. Okay, the nose is coming down by itself by the time I hit 45. All right, we'll go back to uh, just stability assist. There we go. Huh, did it all by itself. Sweet. I have a feeling we're going to do a water landing. All right, so I'm going to turn the uh, air brakes off now because we're dropping just, we're at a thousand meters per second. We can go ahead and kill those. All right, now that we're at 14,000 meters, I think we can activate our jet engines now. There we go. Normally, if you were super efficient, you'd be able to land right on top of the KSC. But let's be real. This is Kerbal Space Program. You need to invent ways or systems on your craft to uh, help you in times where you don't get it absolutely perfect. There we go, nice and easy. Just keep the nose, keep the nose right at prograde, or prograde-ish. Yep, center of lift is definitely in front of the center of mass now. It's nice to know that it has some travel time in the air, you know. And thanks to those engines, they're they're more fuel efficient than say a rapier engine for air breathing. Way more fuel efficient. The emergency crew's ready. This is gonna be a this is gonna be very interesting. Alright, I'm gonna dive in and I'm gonna swoop up just as I come in. Easy now. Turn the lights on so I can see what the hell I'm doing. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna come down. I'm gonna come down. And just as I'm about to hit, I'm gonna pull up. Whoa, that's too much. Get some engines. Engines, engines, engines. Hang on, hang on. Whoa. Brakes. Air brakes. Everything. Brakes. Break everything. <laughs> ah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there she is. Yes, that uh, the whole landing part was a little tricky. It would have been easier had they had more fuel. But um, it worked out pretty good, even though the center of mass was way behind the center of lift. The way the wings work, you really have to pull up hard in order for it to flip backwards on you, which is a good feature, I think. Try to land at the KSC and not on the other side of the continent. That might help you just a little bit, but anyway. 
But seriously guys, if, if you like this video, please leave a like and of course subscribe for more videos. Uh, I normally make videos uh, every week, it's a weekly thing. And um, I try to put a lot of effort and time and energy into them. And if I don't, it's because of extreme lack of time. But those are um, rare and in between, you know, that kind of thing. But anyway, I am Veos Human, signing off, and have a good night.